how much of the sedimentary rock record was actually deposited during Noah's flood. Well, the short answer is that no one really knows because those details are not revealed in scripture. What we do know is that the flood was global in scope, that it covered all of the continents with water, and that it killed all of the then living land breathing animals. Uh, these facts are of course theological, but they should also accord with science, hence the ongoing work of creation researchers in trying to find the pre-flood and post-flood boundaries in the rock record. I mean, if there was a global flood, then some kind of global boundary should exist and should presumably be detectable using science. Now, in this video, I want to talk about the pre-flood flood boundary. Most creation scientists put this boundary at the Precambrian Cambrian boundary, which is right here in the geologic record. The most compelling support for putting the boundary here is the fossil record itself. You see, below this point, and except for the Ediacaran biota, there are virtually no fossils of complex organisms. For those who want a more detailed discussion on the Ediacaran biota, see my paper in ANSYS Research Journal. Uh, basically then, almost all complex organisms first appear in these Cambrian sediments. Now this observation has led secular scientists to call this phenomenon the Cambrian Explosion. They believe this explosion is best explained using an evolutionary worldview. Most creationists, however, believe that the existence of exceptionally fossilized animals and plants all over the world is best explained by catastrophic burial during the flood of Noah. Another key piece of evidence supporting a pre-flood flood boundary right here in the geologic record is the presence of fossilized marine animals in sediments that spread over all of the world's continents. This piece of data fits nicely with the account of the global flood as recorded in Genesis 6 through 9. A third piece of evidence in support of this pre-flood flood boundary is the existence of a widespread surface of erosion called the Great Unconformity. You may have heard of it. This surface of erosion occurs at many localities around the world and its existence is supported by both creationists and secular scientists alike. Most creationists believe that only a catastrophic worldwide flood comparable to the flood of Noah could produce such a universal surface of erosion. That the great unconformity usually sits stratigraphically below the fossil rich Cambrian sediments seems to support the overall interpretation supporting a flood that started right here. Okay, well this sounds like a slam dunk, so why the need for the video? The answer to that is twofold. Number one, as a young earth creationist scientist, a researcher, writer, and teacher, I've recently felt the need to critically reevaluate this particular interpretation. And second, and perhaps more importantly, popular creationist social media platforms tend to use this interpretation as an overall geologic apologetic to validate biblical revelation. If, however, this interpretation is wrong, and if there are other ways to uh, sort of interpret these data, then those committed to a more critical evaluation of scientific facts may use uh, this popular example to distance themselves from the flood of Noah completely. They may even become an old earth creationist or a theistic evolutionist. You see, a universal global flood, it is a theological reality. It really did happen, period. But creationists must be very careful not to pick and choose their scientific data. Creationists must consider all of the scientific evidence, even if that means weakening what creationists once thought was a powerful argument supporting the biblical account of a global flood. And really, this only makes sense. Putting our faith in science to support our Christian convictions is a dangerous practice. Doing so will only cause grief if that particular scientific piece of evidence eventually gets overturned. Okay, so now you see the importance of the video. In part two, I'll discuss the conflicting evidence. Now, for those who are following along with my research, you can find more resources on my website, www.creationunfolding.com, or you can spend three American dollars and buy my book. 
Uh, if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe right now for fast access to more videos, including part two of this series when it gets published. Thank you and goodbye.